What is going on guys? Welcome back to the channel. Critical Overlord here. So this will be the spoiler filled review for Scream 6. Scream 6 is being directed by Radio Silas, Matt Benelli Open, and Tyler Gillette. It's being pinned by James Vanderbilt and Guy Busick, same people who did Scream 5. It is starring Courtney Cox, Melissa Barrera, Jenna Ortega, Jasmine Savoy Brown, Mason Gooding, Skeet Ulrich, Roger Jackson, Dermot Maroney, Jack Champion, Josh Shigera, Liana Liberato, Devin Nakoda, Hayden Pantier, Tony Revolori, Samara Weaving, um, and Henry Kazerni. Now, Scream 6 is revolving around our core four Woodsboro survivors, leaving behind, and, and Gail Weathers, of course, and of course the return of Kirby Reed, but the core four, leaving behind Woodsboro and trying to start a fresh new chapter in New York City, but of course, Ghostface has followed them to the Big Apple, and Sam Carpenter is implicated in all of this. Now, having now seen the movie four times, I'm still confident in saying that this is a thrill ride from start to finish. Not only does it successfully manage to make you care about the characters before they are placed in dire situations, situations like scream has always kind of excelled at doing it finds demented ways to commentate on conspiracy theories cancel culture while still delivering something fresh but familiar in true screen fashion the chase scenes are the type of adrenaline rush one might have been hoping to see in screen five so you're going to get that here in scream six when the chases aren't happening though scream six is still an anxiety inducing experience that excels at making you feel isolated in a packed city of folks too busy to care so i would say the backdrop of new york city is you used uh, to the best way possible maybe it could have been used a little bit more but they do use it in an effective manner guy and james most definitely crafted one of the most unique opening sequence to date that features a franchise first occurrence we have ghostface unmasked after butchering a character named laura crane in a dark alley who was out on a tinder date this character is played by uh samara weaving it's not actually called tinder i think it was called like flicker tony river Laurie, who plays jason who was supposed to be dating her or going out on this date with her ends up unmasking himself and what so shocking is usually you'd expect a title card after somebody dies like that but the scene keeps playing out until ghostface unmasked themselves tony revelor's character of jason goes home and he's taken out by yet another ghost face so subverting expectations would be an understatement because i know many people were not prepared for ghost face to be unmasked during this opening admittedly I will say this when it comes to the writing besides Sam, Tara, Kirby, Gale, Chad and Mindy, our newbies are paper thin at best. However, Josh Shigera's character of Danny stands out by default in the end since he joins De De since he joins Detective Kincaid for now i'll say in the in the list of reliable love interests that exist in this universe as i said in the spoiler free review for every strength to the screenplay there is a weakness so the dialogue still i believe isn't always that great but it never reached a point of absolute absurdity some might be found in shock and confusion at certain survivals like chad surviving once again in true dewey fashion after believing him to be dead the problem isn't chad surviving it's just that maybe some of the brutality that these characters are being put through should be dialed back if you're just going to have them alive uh, I do think that some of the stakes are lessened also when you execute a fake out death in that fashion So the brutality should just be dialed back a little bit now The deaths in this movie are truly brutal when they occur It's just that the execution again of some fake outs aren't that great Yes, there are gaping logic holes due to unanswered questions, but none that ever shatter the movie completely as expected You have your meta commentary self self-aware characters uh, callbacks to franchise favorites mostly like Scream 2 and 3, but still the, this film pays respect to every entry that came before it in a way that is long overdue with these elaborate set pieces filled with stolen evidence of stuff that calls back to past past survivors who are now dead. You know, it was just a lot of heartfelt moments, especially during that shrine sequence. There's also the dashes of social commentary that examine how de how destructive conspiracy theories can be and why some people might exploit them. I really have to commend the frame job that is written up here in this movie towards Sam. You have them leaving mask at the scenes of the crimes in reverse order, counting down to Billy's, killing her therapist and stealing her session notes, plus the media coverage of the conspiracy that she did the Woodsboro murders, not Amber and Richie. It's just some of the most well-written attempts to frame a protagonist that we've had of late. The character work is the strongest aspect of the screenplay, which allows us to learn that Sam is overly invested in playing helicopter mom to make up for abandoning Tara after she found out she was Billy's daughter. Tara is coping with her Woodsboro trauma by being a little reckless, and she is sick of Sam stalking her, as she puts it. Gail has written a new book after being unsuccessful at failing to sell the stab rights she holds, and Gail's backtrack, as people called it, is not true within complete context. They provide a simple explanation for why she wrote the new book and her ability to be more than a mean reporter 
still is shining throughout this movie. Kirby's FBI involvement might come off underwhelming to some, but I thought it was handled just fine. She's not overshadowing our main characters, but is given a role that allows her to shine as a supporting character. We learned that she did indeed die for four minutes after the Charlie attack, and afterwards, she wanted to not be a victim for the rest of her life, which is what prompted her to go down the career path she's chosen. The fact that Kirby kills our incel Charlie Walker type killer in the end was also poetic justice, since it was her making up for not killing the last incel that effed with her. Without this strong character work, all of the dire situations that they find themselves in just would not have impacted me the same. The killer reveals of Bailey, Quinn, and Ethan are not underwhelming, but it was just another, oh, that makes sense type of thing. The only motives this, this franchise has really managed to make me love are the motives of four and five so this was just another ah okay yes these people are richie's family and they want revenge the nuanced differences between scream 2 and scream 6 are what keep it separate but yes i still get its rehatching which is something scream has a habit of doing scream 6 absolutely is drenched in tension sure the impeccable pacing allows you to have these pockets of relief to laugh and invest in our core four which is a term i got tired of hearing but it's almost never going to have you almost not never going to have you on the edge of your seat i'd go as far to say that the subway sequence between Mindy uh, or before Mindy is stabbed is a masterfully crafted sequence that plays with your paranoia, gets your heart rate going, and comes close to rivaling that car scene in Scream 2. Melissa Barrera has once again shown that she belongs here. She excels at portraying an overprotective sister who wants to shatter under pressure but remains strong for her sister. Her delivery is a lot better in this movie, and I especially love the chemistry she had with Courtney, who really gets to shine and hold it down for our legacy characters. Jenna Ortega absolutely is incredible as always, capturing Tara's fear and desire to be a independent person with ease. Hayden does a wonderful job hopping back into the role after so long, capturing Kirby's mannerisms while displaying a more die or displaying a more hardened version of herself the horror nerd that we first met back in screen four jack champion i don't want to say is bad at playing shy and dorky he's actually solid enough and his unhinged performance during the reveal did work for me however Dur dermot was the one doing an adequate job up until he started yelling at sam saying everyone dies anyone who had anything to do with richie's death you know that delivery from him it was just laughable and horrific to watch sometimes after the mask came off still Everyone is good and effective enough. Visually, I would say that the color palette in this film is a lot more pleasing to look at. Uh, five is a bit dull in comparison to this. The editing is mostly improved. The camera work also makes Ghostface a menacing force. And the way they play with the idea of Ghostface being a literal ghost during the subway where the lights are flickering and the killer is slowly getting closer to Mindy, but it's executed in a way to look like they are teleporting. That was just done masterfully well. Now, Brian Tyler's score amplifies the suspense felt throughout and it's heightening the intensity of every chase scene, especially Gail's, which outdoes her Scream 2 chase, I would say. Courtney's delivery combined with Ghostface's brutal old blows about her being a perfect Ghostface contender, not being there for Dewey, living in Sydney's shadow, all of it was just amazing. I actually do love how they reference Sydney Prescott and explain that she decided to get away with her kids and her husband Mark, but she did send her love in hopes everyone can be safe and that she deserves her happy ending. Simple Sydney references that acknowledge that her character indeed was working towards peace. She was not somebody intended to be put through the ringer over and over and over again every time Ghostface pops up. By the way, major props for really selling it on Gail being dead, only to then reveal she lived. Not everyone bought it, but it's effective still since you had those seeds of doubt placed until her survival is confirmed later on in the movie by Danny. That latter sequence is perhaps the most gut-wrenching kill you have to endure in the movie. Devin Dakota's Anika character wasn't that strong, but she was Mindy's likable girlfriend, so it added to the emotional angst felt. And of course, while I did find Mindy annoying at times in this movie, I still love the character of Mindy. So my heart was breaking for her during this moment. The sound design this time seemed pretty determined to make you feel the stabs because I was just wincing way too much during some of these stab wounds. Uh, more than I ever have in any of the any of the other previous screen movies. I almost want to say that this is my favorite screen movie, but I'm still undecided on that. I am going to give it a solid strong eight out of ten. Those are my thoughts on Scream Six. This is the spoiler filled review. If you want to have more of my thoughts on the killer reveal, you should be looking at a different video that's aired already. But let me know what you guys think about this down in the comment section below. If you haven't already, of course, make sure you go ahead and subscribe. Turn on post notifications so you never miss a video. In the description, I will have links on my social media accounts. I'm on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. You can message me there, of course. Let me know if there's any movies, news, or reviews you'd like me to cover in the future. And with all that in mind, guys, I will see you in the next video.